Um, I've got a couple of questions. First, I guess I'm a bit um, unsure about how you use the term trade-off rather than costs and benefits of a decision, or yeah. the, because um, in my understanding, trade-offs can be the cost and benefit of a decision of a project or organization to conduct a certain activity in the landscape, or it could be um, in terms of actual uh, physical landscape itself, so mm -hmm. for us to uh, be How have you defined the word trade-off in this? We have purposely left it open. And the reason is, I mean, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that we realized early on in this process, and again, this is, you know, I don't want to like air, hang our dirty laundry too much, but, but um, you know, part of the dysfunctionality of all of it, one of the things we realized is that, that different perspectives not only see the case study from their perspective, but they also see the other perspectives from their perspective. Do you know what I'm saying? So that, so we had, for instance, at our, uh, our Tanzania workshop, there was a, a guy there and he said, oh, you're just talking about opportunity costs. Here, in the conversation. It's like, no. Different, um, you know, someone who works in, 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 you know, sort of a more process mode, whether, whatever their discipline or, or field of practice, wouldn't necessarily think in terms of costs and benefits. They would think in terms of fairness and equity. That's a very different way of thinking about a trade-off than thinking about you know just you know who wins, who loses, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> likewise, you know someone to sort of view things from a power perspective would say um, you know the trade-offs are being made. I don't know, just throw this out there, but you know trade-offs are being made. Um, through through you know through kind of a, uh, insidious process of redefining the forests. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the, the thing is the and, and this was really my initial as I mentioned my initial resistance to the idea of trade-offs because it does um, it can be read from a from a somewhat narrow perspective. But what you have to realize is that lots of different fields use the idea of trade-offs. And they use it in very sometimes explicit ways with very sort of formal methods attached to it, but also in very informal ways um, or very implicit ways or through various predicates. Like whenever you talk about choice or decision, um, you're really in many contexts talking about a trade-off. And that may not be captured by an analysis that compels you to think in terms of cost, and just cost of benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a small yeah. addition on that, yeah. back to your language. But maybe we've had many discussions on what is the appropriate mass in Indonesia term for trade-off. And I think the term we came up with is actually interesting, not in your valuation box, but it is in the process and the power, and it refers to two verbs. One is, is Istarek, which is pulling, and one is Tavar, which means negotiate. Tarek uh, Manavar is, if you can say it back to English, becomes tug of war. <laughs> but I think probably that, that was back in translation back. So our best Indonesian term for trade off is actually translated back to Indonesian, tug of war. But yeah. it basically means different things, yeah, yeah. negotiating yeah. and pulling. Yeah, so no, that's, that's great. <laughs> Just so to then. You discussed all the um, analysis of uh, valuation process and how, um, in terms of the gaps that, that might appear, but mm -hmm. what then do you do with that information? What is that? That's but that this is where what, what, that's why I was being very forthright in saying. So then what? And we really are in the process of the of the so then what? We you know. Um, we want to be able to say something more than. Well, this identifies these research gaps. I mean, that's an important that's an important thing to be able to say as a result of an analysis like this. Um, but I also think one of the things that we've become very aware of, and perhaps that we've developed this um, and kind of testing it through these workshops, is that there are particular you know, every country 
has a different political culture, different institutional framework for doing things, different ideas about decentralization, indigenous rights, or various kinds of things. And, and, and you know, again, in the spirit of pluralism, one size doesn't fit all, and that, that and we, I think we particularly become aware of this in Vietnam, that there is a process that could occur in Vietnam involving <coughs> this kind of analysis that would lead in a very different direction than if you were to do it in Peru, Tanzania, Indonesia, wherever. Um, and, and so that's something that we're, I think, that we're, we're not struggling with yet, but we identify it as something that we need to address. You have a question? I was wondering, could we see the former slide in terms of answering the first question? Yeah. The extra, I just wanted to see, and it looked like the quick glance, yes. that it was the big players. Yeah. And I would imagine that during our case studies, you're likely to consult them also with some of the more national level players, and maybe also well, social responsibility. <laughs> Yes, this, what I'm trying to do with this external consultation, I, I mean, I, I'm sort of approaching this in two sort of, um, and, and this is really about CICR, not ACS, right? This is, um, I'm coming at this as an anthropologist who's acutely aware of a deep distrust of anthropologists and academics in general by conservation practitioners. And I'm also coming at this from the perspective that in, in my field we've talked about collaboration a lot, okay? But we all, and, and I think we've covered a great, you know, we, we've covered a lot of distance. But it's always in the context of how do we collaborate with those local communities where we work. What we haven't addressed is what does collaboration mean when you're working with you know, CI and TNC and WWF and so forth, where you come up against issues of complicity, academic integrity, and so forth. It can be a very difficult thing. And that's what, what I'm trying to do is envision a process where we can do research in conjunction with these organizations, build partnerships um, uh, that in, in a way that's truly collaborative, but that also addresses those academic concerns because we can't lose sight of those or we don't call the JLC and so forth. The other side of it is that process, and this is one of the things that I've been doing here. Uh, if we were to, let's say, undertake something related to part of Borneo or Coral Triangle, you know, I wouldn't just be visiting um, you know, TNC, CI, and WWF. Uh, but obviously um, you know, scoping out who all the local NGOs are, who speaks for local communities, and all of that. Um, but this is really for the um, for the process of you know, when I put this up here, this is for the process of CICR strategic planning. Um, and for instance, what I present to, to potential funders to my university, to the vice president for research, and all of that. So. But the other part is, is, is really key. And you haven't listed donors on there. You mentioned donors in terms of influencing the conservation. Yeah, agenda. I haven't. This is, this is, again, this is CICR. This is not ACSC. So, um, uh, you know, donors, definitely someone that, that we want to be speaking to. But right now, you know, kind of holding off on that and letting the ACSC process or do its thing. Thank you very much. 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 Th